Nam yo honing gecko, 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 nam yo honing gecko. Hi, I'm Margaret, and this is the channel where we take Buddhist practice and study and apply it to the problems and concerns of everyday life. Before I actually do the vlog, I, want, I really want to thank all of you who contacted me to ask me how I was and apologize that I haven't gotten my vlog out the first week of the month. Um, it's not an excuse, it's just a fact. I was overwhelmed by my coaching practice and I will try and do much better in the future. And I got a really interesting question this last week, which was, I've been chanting for a while now, and I have friends who've been chanting a lot longer than I have, who are not getting benefit in their practice. And why is that the case? You know, to tell the truth, it was to answer that question that was the exact reason why I started this vlog to begin with. It's a really important question. And so today, I want to kind of cover some of the waterfront of things that might be contributing to that problem. I want to give you a quote by Nietzsche. If you want to understand the cause that existed in the past, look at the results as they are manifested in the present. And if you want to understand what results will be manifested in the future, look at the causes that exist in the present. Now, what is this looking at exactly? Well, we're looking at two of the Buddha's concepts. One, the simultaneity of cause and effect, and the other, the oneness of self and its environment. The simultaneity of cause and effect is saying that everything we think, speak, and act is setting a cause in our lives now for a future effect in our lives. That means our thoughts are generative and creative, and that our beliefs, what we believe today is absolutely going to be so, because we have said it so. The, so our thoughts and our beliefs are setting our future effects. Now this is really important if we want to change our future because it means we're going to have to start examining our thoughts and our beliefs to see what it is we're projecting to the universe not just during the time that we're chanting but all the time it's the beginning of mastering the mind now another reason that people might not be getting benefit would be that they need to grow in order to achieve the goal that they have now, I've told this story before, but I think it illustrates this point really well. I knew someone who was a recovering alcoholic who had a temp job as a truck driver. And he wanted to have a career level job, a really good job with benefits and the whole thing, driving a truck, because he loves to drive trucks. But he wasn't ready for it. He was a recovering alcoholic and early in the stages of recovery. Now he started chanting for that job and chanting for that job. He would spend a lot of time in his temp truck chanting for that job. He even got a t-shirt that said, never give up. And all those things didn't seem to be progressing on the surface. Underneath the surface, a lot was going on. He was working the 12 steps. He was bringing his financial life into order. And when after a year and a half, he finally achieved his goal. He was ready. He was ready for a career level job as a truck driver. Now, if you're not achieving goals, and this has been going on for a while, I think it might be really important to ask, how am I resisting change? Am I resisting change in what I believe? Am I saying I am this way and this is the way I'm going to be and that's it? Am I resisting change because I'm afraid of it? Because if we're resisting change, it's going to be very hard for the universe to bring us a goal when we need to grow.
Now the final area that I think we need to look at is whether or not we're doing all parts of the practice. There's a member of my group who's a very experienced practitioner. And when I brought up this issue of people not getting benefit to her, she said, oh, they're simply not doing all the aspects of the practice. So let's take a look at what those might be. Three legs to the stool. The first is faith. Are you chanting every day, twice a day? Or are you chanting sometimes? And are you chanting with determination and focus or just kind of letting your mind kind of go back and forth around all kinds of things? Or are you having a lot of doubts and wallowing in those doubts? You see, I don't think a little doubt that flits through here and there is really important, but if we spend a lot of attention and time on those doubts, remember our thoughts are generative. We're producing a future effect. So we want to look at that. And President Ikeda talks about that in My Dear Friends in America. He says, if you practice faith while doubting its effects, you will get results that are at best unsatisfactory. This is the reflection of your own weak faith on the mirror of the cosmos. I think it couldn't be any more direct than that. Now the second leg of the practice is practice. Are you going to discussion meetings and are you contributing to those meetings? Maybe setting up the physical plant or doing a presentation and for sure saying the things you need to say to help other people in the group. Or are you going for entertainment and not really contributing to anything? Are you supporting the practice of others? Maybe doing home visits with a district leader, answering questions, helping newbies understand the practice. Are you supporting their practice? And are you doing shakabuku? Are you introducing new people to the practice? That, in my experience, will take your life and make it fly. And things will really start to move forward. There is nothing that does that more than explaining the practice to somebody who's brand new. And finally, the third leg is study. We study so that we're going to have an increasingly deeper understanding of what it is we're learning from Buddhism. But there's a lot more to it than that. Are you taking what you're learning in your study and trying to apply it to your life? That's how we grow as people in our practice. We take these principles and we apply them. We study them. And you know, one of the great ways of doing that is to take a book like For Today and Tomorrow, that nice yellow encouragement book, take a paragraph from it each day on that day's date, and then that day try and apply it in your life. But it really does require all three legs of the practice. <laughs> Otherwise, we're not developing as Buddhists. Thank you for listening to this today. And I want to thank you again for all your comments and really encourage you to send me topics that you're interested in because I really want this blog to answer the kinds of questions and meet the needs of the people who come to it. And I promise you next month, I'll have my blog out the first week of the month.